Hello, welcome along to the Supreme Commander Forged Lands Forever Community Cast Library Volume 13B, The Conclusion. It's only been a couple of days since Part A went out, so hopefully this is all still very fresh in your memory. So we're going to jump right back into the action, just as Mr. Z is marching a GC up mid, approaching Hazen Nid's base. Okay guys, enjoy. And H now adopting the good old T1 bomber spam approach to try and deal with the GC and the GC now is approaching the peripheral edge of Hazen Nid's base and going into the destruction of a T3 power generator and now a T3 naval factory and Hazen Nid there wisely control king a large proportion of his engineers they do not want to vet this GC more than they absolutely necessarily have to a control K goes out on some more of the Oh, but Bitches here is under pressure. And we've got ground fire coming in from Zooey's. Ground fire from Zooey's do that much, really? Well, the Zooey's are now targeting the... The harm structures. I'm just trying to work out here. What applied that damage to Bitches' ACU because he is deep, deep into the red here. Less than 1,000 hit points on Bitches. And he's walking straight towards this GC. The GC is on the HQ of Hazen Nid's naval factory and it's taking out all the build power around that HQ. Hazen Nid not control king the engineers here, giving the GC veterancy. It's at its second level of veterancy now as it starts to move off again. And Bitches, I don't know if Bitches uh, survives this. We've got torpedo bombers coming in from Mansika Uko. And Bitches is going to take some torpedoes up the arse and go bang. Um, Bitches. I think, I don't know if this is too harsh, but I think Bitches might... Uh, Regret the decision to initially assist Navy in the South Pond. I think by the time he decided that he needed to help out Hazen Nid on beach. Mansika was already at uh, kind of critical mass. H has not done too much to try and assist Hazen Nid as well. But to be fair to Mansika... That is a lot of shit going on right now for Mansika. He is doing a fine job. And uh, there was a nuke somewhere <laughs> in the middle of all that. We've missed the nuke, guys. Somewhere got nuked. There we go. <laughs> and uh, so Jazzy there, nuking about 10 years ago. The game is getting pretty slow right now. Let's try and... Sp I don't know. The, the speed isn't going to do anything, I don't think because it's a direct file transfer from, from the guy. So uh, we're going to have to watch this in uh, slower motion. But uh, anyway, Jazzy there nuking the naval area of Mansika Uko. And uh, Jazzy there actually taking out the HQ, the T3 HQ. So... Mansika right now is temporarily down to T1 naval production, I think. No, T2. We do have a T2 HQ here. It is being assisted on a T3 upgrade. So that'll only affect Mansika's ability to produce T3 navy for just a few minutes there. Uh, so not too much reprieve for Team 1. And Hazenid, uh, coincidentally, inheriting... Sorry, what the fuck am I talking about? Yes, that was right. Hazenid inheriting what little remained of Bitches's stuff. Mainly around this naval area. And in the South Navy now, Stybjorn's epic defense look like looks like it's finally starting to crumble. Pressure now being applied on the build power surrounding the HQ and one of the T3 factories itself. Stybjorn gets a summit out, but I'm pretty sure that that's going to be the last T3 
naval unit that that HQ produces as Jazzy now his victory in the South Pond uh, with the help of Bitches while he was alive uh, Jazzy's victory all but needing the formalities and uh, Mansika has actually gifted the air portion of what used to be Turin Turumba's base over to Stybjorn, assumingly because Stybjorn is soon to be out of navy and have little to spend his APM on. So Stybjorn now coming the de facto air player for Team 2. Actually, I, what's happened to uh, the ASF? So the ASF on Team 2 has, uh, has been absolutely annihilated at some point. And uh, Team 1 now with complete air control. And we see Hazenid looking to take advantage of sad air control as he moves in. A lot of torpedo bombers here. I think that's a little bit of overkill considering what he's actually got left to kill isn't too much. And did I just see someone say they finished a bottom washer? And there we go. Jazzy completing the... Awasar, which is actually belonging to Hazenid. So Jazzy building the arse washer, handing it off to Hazenid. And actually a good choice of experimental unit because uh, Team 2 completely lacking in ASF as we saw. And Jazzy, his third nuke is square on the base of Mr. Z and Mr. Z's SMD has either been destroyed at some point or he didn't build one. I don't think he built one. <laughs> and we enjoy the nuclear plume of smoke there. And where is this? I was saw heading to. I've lost track of it. There it is. It's it's in the South Sea making its it's meandering. It's taking its time for its approach. And actually we see now H is just moving in his ASF to the bottom. Assumingly he's gonna try and intercept the ASF group of Stybjorn and take that out before the Oasar moves in. In terms of air production, Stybjorn has got some multiple UEF T3 air factories online. He's also got some uh, power that he's given off to Mansika. Just taking a look at uh, Mansika's base right now. We haven't really spent too much time catching up on people's bases and stuff. Uh, the action has just been <laughs> absolutely relentless and speaking of relentless just look at this now Mansika Uko with a complete tirade of Zooey's now coming onto land Hazenid has got a defensive chicken online that'll do him some good but down in the south the arse washer about to go to work and Where's it going? A nice turn there on the arse washer, getting away quickly. Going in for all that build power. Oh, that is nasty. 129 kills in its first pass for the arse washer. And now some disgusting micro coming in here from <laughs> Hazenid. No way, get away with you. That micro was absolutely disgusting. You see that? Oh. Hazenid's second pass with the art. I was saw a thing of beauty. That is a sick micro. I can see why Jazzy handed this straight off to Hazenid now because Hazenid knows how to use one of these things. Uh, we just see him again. It's it's not like a bomber at all. It's more like a fucking gunship right now. And it's going to go down here. But it's got three excellent bombs off here. In really one pass, it's kind of got three bombs off. That was some pretty impressive micro there from Hazenid. I'm really glad I got that. That was absolutely disgusting. 
particularly the second bit here. It seemed to like levitate there forever as it kind of recharged its bomb. And we see a bug now in the middle uh, being sent forward by Hazenid. Just going to work on some T3 engineers. We're not going to pay too much attention to bug because bugs generally suck balls. What else have we got going on? And we've got this defensive chicken that's been pinged to move here because it's sustaining quite heavy fire from the battleships of Mansika Uko and Hazenid now reacquiring his micro to his chicken and backing it away. He only needs it to fend off the tirade of Zooey's that were approaching. I'm not sure there's too much that Hazenid can do now to fend off this much navy and this much Zooey spam. It's just a case of when, not if, Manseca breaches the beach of Team 1. And in the middle now we've got quite a sizable airfield up from H. And he's also getting some ravages up. So this area here now forming a kind of secondary front line here for Team 1. Just in case the forward position currently held by Hazen Nid falls. And actually, we've got uh, Manseka with his own chickens in this South Sea here. Why isn't he moving them in? Team 1 with... Well, they've got no chicken really. The, the one chicken they had is about to die. So these two chickens now from Manseka with serious potential to fuck things up for team one uh, but they're just kind of stood there right now they're not moving get on there chickens ride them chicken come on <laughs> that's terrible uh, <laughs> and the bug back down in the south it's continuing to spit paper balls it's got like a little you know the thing you used to do in school where you take the ink out of your pen and then you'd like spit paper through it? That's pretty much what these bugs are doing right now. There's only one of them. And it's just kind of like aimlessly meandering around the map. Killing little bits and pieces but not really doing too much. Not really very effective. And we just got uh, TML coming off of this uh, aircraft carrier here just taking out the bottom three maxes here that were formerly held by Stybjorn. South Navy has completely fallen and as a result really Jazzy carving out a huge area depriving Team 2 of this huge area here. There is at least a dozen maxes that uh, Jazzy is now stopping Team 2 from claiming. What can the trio of Mr. Z Stybjorn and Mansika Uko do right now. They look like their backs up are, are up against the wall. That's definitely the case in the South Pond. In the North Pond, Team 2 faring much, much better with uh, Mansika Uko in firm control, but he is yet to carve out the same destruction sphere of kind of influence that uh, Team 2, sorry, Team 1 have carved out on the bottom half of the map. So if we just look at land control right now, that picture pretty much says everything that I am trying to say. And still the chickens don't move. Why doesn't he send them in? What does he know that we don't? Maybe he doesn't know that they've got nothing. That's probably more logical. So let's just take a quick opportunity to uh, catch up on some uh, eco statistics right now. and. Out in first place currently we have Jazzy leading the pack with a mass income of 594 per tick. In second place we have Mansika Uko, uh, 518 per tick. And in third place it's H with a mass income of 419 per tick. So Team 1 with a 1 and 3 in terms of the mass stakes. Manseeker for Team 2, the only one of the top three on Team 2 in terms of eco. And the chickens finally, finally remember that they can move and have landed on the beach of Hazenid's former base. 
and they are going to start going to work here and there's a third chicken maybe that's why the two are being held back they were waiting for the third one to catch up and immediately going to work on this support ACU which is trying to suck up the remnants of the former chicken of Hazenid I just heard an arsh washer dropping something somewhere and down in the south pond we now have two bugs of Hazenid and there's the arse washer being chased by yellow ASF and a ping going out from Hazenid there just to grab the attention of H and say hey dude come and defend my my arse washer gunship thing because my micro is sick <laughs> and the chickens of Manseeker now are being followed up by a tirade of zooies the zooies are going to branch off northward it looks like to take out the T1 spam base of Hazenid with some eco structures the chickens have stopped here from Mansika. I think Mansika is being a little bit indecisive with the movement of these chickens he just kind of needs to push them in get them in get them in there come on come on <laughs> of course uh, Mansika will not want to walk them into the ravages you know um, uh, but they're stood still and Team 1 are picking off these chickens now with a mixture of T1 spam and uh, what are they called? Strat bombers and one chicken's gone down and the resulting ion storm is going to harm his former brother chicken chicken turns on chicken and the uh, strat and t1 bomber spam continues and this chicken is soon for the slaughterhouse as well and there it goes okay now there it goes and the third chicken with its armada of zooies coming in behind really underwhelming what it's managed to accomplish and what looked like a really dangerous beach arrival there for Team 2 aka Mansika not turning out to be very effective but I do see a lot of strats here brewing from Team 1 Hazenid and H have been uh, definitely focusing on strats we've got a bug coming back here from the south pond uh, it's probably coming home to be reclaimed because it's fucking useless <laughs> uh, we now see strat bombers menacingly moving southward from H H already has his ASF out in front looking to defend against the non-existent air of team 2 right now Stybjorn has become the air player for Team 2 but he's not really been able to recover ASF numbers against H understandable probably and we see here that Stybjorn has actually put a lot of eco into getting some serious SAM numbers going very sensible there from Stybjorn and Stybjorn's ACU actually chilling out in the area of Mansika. Mansika here with a chicken uh, he's probably just going to keep that back defensively for now I imagine but let's check in on those strat bombers and have we got any attack moves planned out here no attack moves just a, a move order queued up here what could he go for a scouts going out now from H let's jump into H a second he's scouting this area so he doesn't see the ACU the only thing of real value that he can see is the SMD I'm thinking right now we haven't seen a nuke come out from Jazzy for a little while and actually now H scouting the south base of Stybjorn 
But the ASF are coming in and Stabiel knows something's going on here and Stabiel moving in what little ASF he's got to try and... Oh, wow! Look at that explosion of... There must have been about 10 strap bombers there that died simultaneously. I'm not sure how that happened. That was too far out to be Sam's, surely. Just... Uh, ASF pretty effective micro there from Stybjorn obviously prioritizing the kill orders on the incoming strat bombers of course Stybjorn again sacrificing what little chance of regaining air parity he had to take out oh but the the SMD got taken out regardless and Jazzy chucking out another nuke and it's actually a naval nuke this time and the central base for the second time of this match team 2's central base is going to go down here to a nuke from uh, from a battleship strategic battleship and there's not too much there I mean yeah okay there's some T3 powers some T3 air factories but uh yeah not not game changing let's say and H now not content with that and is aggressively sending in his ASF here where we've got a few more strats moving in and behind So Hazenid is lining up another strat run here and we've got scouts going out over the south base. Going out over the south base of Team 1 and Mr. Zeon there. We just see Reed there in the chat. Mr. Zeon actually needed to go. Uh, so he's control K'd after giving all of his stuff over. Well, he didn't actually have a lot of stuff, let's be honest. <laughs> and uh, we've got a bug, a gunship, Awasar, in the hands of Hayes and Nid, milling around the middle. The ASF of H moving in to defend the bug as it nearly died. And now the strats are coming in. They're lining up on something on the bottom. And it looks like I see another SMD. Two more SMDs here in the south base for Team 1. No doubt they're going to be the targets. And the strats running in from H. And one of the SMDs going down in the first pass here. We've got another pass of strats coming in from Hazen Nid and the second SMB, SMD has been pinged but Hazen Nid well he might have sick micro when it comes to using our SARS but his micro on his strategic bombers there was absolutely fucking abysmal he's pulled off his strats before they got the bombs away to take out the SMD and I'm assuming that that nuke was heading for the area <laughs> we just see that one strat bomb. And there's another one coming in. Does it get its bomb away? It does not get its bomb away. The last strat. There was two straggling strats there from Hazenid trying to make good on the poor micro attempt earlier. But guess what? Hazenid sacrificing his latest Awasar in the crusade to try and take out this last SMD but failing to do so and this SMD clinging on to life and actually now we've got two nukes out here and there's only one anti-nuke in the tube so they've not taken out the SMD but it's only going to take out one of the incoming nukes fuck happened there uh, what 
Well, there's his ACU. Well, apparently, H has control K'd or left or something. What a bizarre thing to do. What a bizarre time to do it. It didn't look like a, a DC. So, H just randomly leaving there. Did I miss something in the comments? Nothing in the comments to indicate that H was going to leave. And... Wow. Team 1 now down to... Jazzy and Hazenid. And I don't quite know what to make of that. I thought the match was pretty even as it was. But uh, losing... Losing H like that, I don't know if it's going to have a, an impact on the end of the game. Well, it has to, really, because they've just lost a third of their APM. But, uh, to be honest, zoomed out as we are, you'd still have to favour Team 1, because they just have so much more land control, so much more stuff going on. And really, Team 2 down to one player really I mean Stybjorn is obviously still here I don't think he's gonna DC god I hope not I've just wasted like an hour if I if he does <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Stybjorn has got nothing left really he's got a GC to his name uh, with a with T with three T3 air factories but none of them are HQ four T3 air factories that aren't HQ so Stybjorn pretty much irrelevant right now and Jazzy is just continuing to rain nukes down on the other side of the map and Hazenid here with a com drop into Jazzy's base there accompanied by some T3 engineers so a mass drop of build power arriving into the base of Jazzy from Hazenid and Hazenid abandoning understandably the position he was holding as Mansika now starting to get a beachhead up starting to spam Zooey's we've got a defensive bug here out from Hazenid is about the only thing they're good for with some harbingers moving down so the beachhead not looking like it's going to survive too long from Mansika, but the fact that uh, he is starting to make that kind of headway might give Team 1 a little pause for concern, although they should still be pretty confident. And that, to me, looks like we saw a Paragon queued up there from Team 2. And we've got a, a pattern of shields. And there we go. There's a Paragon queuing up for Jazzy or Hazenid. Well. Oh, and we actually have a Paragon that's half fucking done for Mansika here. Stybjorn putting all of his eco into the construction of a Paragon as well. So Mansika here. Ooh. Well, way ahead on the uh, let's make a paragon thing, and that's half done. And the paragon from Hazen <laughs> we've got <laughs> we never I never see paragons get built, and now there's like two in one game being being built. So Hazen concentrating all of his build power into the paragon, uh, Jazzy isn't assisting just yet I imagine he'll probably want to do that sooner rather than later and we're in a bit of a stalemate now there's real st struggling to find an end to this game speaking of the beachhead that Mansika made in the top half of the map uh, we've got loyalists from Hazenid roaming around the south half of the map on behalf of team one killing well right now they're working on a ravager but they were killing t3 mass extractors and there's a defensive gc on the prowl from 
Stybjorn as he tries to move it south and intercept the Loyalists parading around from Hazenid. And we just hear that the notification of two nukes going out. And Hazenid looks like he's going for the side island of Mansika. And where's that one headed? And another naval nuke going out. Looks like it may be targeting this little pocket of base here. What's Mansika got held up here? Well, there's a couple of T3 power generators, quantum gateways, quite a lot of anti air, and a, a double capped T3 Max from Styborn there going up in smoke. The nuke in the top island taking out most of the islands, Eco. Just the one T3 Max remaining there, not claiming uh, the naval factories of Mansika. Although, to be honest, he really doesn't need naval production right now. He's got a very firm grip on this destruction fear here. And his second attempt at getting a beachhead up is looks like it's faring better than the first attempt. We've got Zooey's now starting to penetrate right on the edge of the top base of Hazenid. Let's check in on the crazy ass Paragons. Team 1's Paragon about one third completed. And Team 2's Paragon is in the green. We're about 80% complete on Team 2's Paragon. And Stybjorn there moving off his assistance. And it looks like that the those ACUs of Stybjorn are just I'm I'm just waiting to see what they go into spamming when that Paragon gets finished. Assuming it does get finished. We've got two loyalists now moving no north from Hazenid. But a defensive chicken from Mansika Uko just uh, seeing those two off. And just look at the map control now. Team 1, they still have control of three quarters, two thirds of their half of the map. And Team 2 reduced to the rock position, essentially. Jazzy's got a huge beachhead going up. And Hazen did. There's a lot of land spam coming the way of Mansika Uko and Stybjorn. But the Paragon completes. Uh, map control means absolutely dick when you've got a Paragon in your corner. And now we're starting to see units being transferred over. We've got T3 shields going up here. They're going to go up like they're made of paper. And over on Team 1. The Paragon is in the green and they've already started construction on a Mavor. So Team 1 going Paragon Mavor here. So we are at the full spectrum of end game shenanigans now. And it's really just a case of despite the fact despite the fact that Team 1 have had vastly superior map control for so much of the game. This is really being reduced to a toss-up of who can spam ridiculously powerful artillery the quickest. Because Team 2 matching Team 1's tactic going Paragon, Mavor, Stybjorn, spamming Kennels. Going to get all the assistance that they can muster on this Mavor. And I'm just zooming out here as we see... That uh, Mansika Uko, having completed the Paragon, has transferred all of his mexes over to Stybjorn. I imagine some kind of similar arrangement has happened in the south. So the Paragon belonging to Hazenid and all of all of the shields have been transferred over to Hazenid to power, and uh, Jazzy obviously retaining the T3 power as he still needs it. But Hazenid with all the max points as uh, as done by Team 2 as well. 
So we've got Mavors going up like their confetti now, and this one is nearly two-thirds complete. Let's hop over to the other side of the map, and Team 1's Mavor considerably f less developed than Team 2's Mavor, and perhaps more importantly, or maybe not so, is the lack of shielding around this Mavor. Whereas Team 2, Jesus, that's going up quick. That is literally a Mavor built in about, it felt like three minutes. Crazy, crazy things going on at the end of this game. <laughs> and the second Mavor is on its way before the first one even fires its first fucking volley. And, <laughs> and also here, we see a YOLO going up from Mansika as well. So Mansika is spamming the crap out of T4 stuff here. And the Mavor going into its first shell as it navigates its way across half of the map. I don't think that first shell is... Uh, was controlled by Mansika. I'm pretty sure he could have picked a better target than Jazzy's Island. Unless he's going for the anti-nuke on Jazzy's Island, that is. First one's a miss. And now we see nukes spamming out here from Mansika Uko. He's got his own strategic battleships up. They have charged nukes. And we've got two nukes now bearing down on the base of Jazzy. Jazzy has got SMD. He's going to fend these off. No problem. However, there is logic to Mansika Uko's seemingly daft tactic. Because this thing here is going to require a shit ton of SMD. So Mansika here just using the nukes charged up in his strategic battleship to basically drain the SMDs in the bases of Jazzy and Hazenid. And the Mave all there going down on Team 1. Mansika clearly has the Paragon scouted on Team 2 and I'm guessing that's going to be his target. Another Mavor half complete now for Team 1. Bit chess saying that while well, the game's over anyway. Can you really say the game's over when your teammates have a Paragon? Granted, uh, Team 1 didn't do a very excellent job of shielding the Mavor that they did get up, and that was probably an expensive mistake. And we see more nukes there coming in from Mansika now. The Yolana is charged, it has a nuke in the bottle, and was that the nuke? Nope, not quite yet. The second one is the Yolana nuke. So the last strategic battleship launching its pretty useless nuke here. Just draining the SMD loaded bullets. Oh, and the Mavor gets through on the Paragon. And the Mavor hitting a home run there and taking Hazenid with him. <laughs> oh no, that's terrible. Note to self, don't stand ACU next to a Paragon. And, well, I would agree with Bitchass now. <laughs> and we got all sorts of shit bearing down on the base of Jazzy. Jazzy is the last man standing for Team 1. He's got quite a lot himself, but he's not got enough to defend off the T4 onslaught, onslaught of Yolana nukes and Mavor shells. 
Mansika really just moving in the chickens as a formality. Maybe just to try and distract Jazzy a little bit and expediate the end of this match. And I don't think uh, Jazzy nearly running out of anti nukes there. I thought that one was going to get through. <laughs> and <laughs> every five seconds now we hear a strategic launch detected. And Jazzy actually launching his own nuke there. That surely has to be, well, two nukes going over from Jazzy. That surely has to be an in vain attempt on getting through Mansika. Well, that one's empty. And stuff going down to the chickens there. But this Yolana nuke has made it through. Jazzy is fresh out of SMD bullets. And that one gets through. Not the best placement of a nuke, I don't think, but uh, doing the job and the ion storms from the destructing chickens that taking Jazzy into the red. And Jazzy now, well, ironically, that's dodged the nuke for him. And Jazzy fought really well, played very well, considering Jazzy actually was technically the lowest ranked player in this match at 1400. I tell you what guys, that is a fucking pro level match when the lowest dude is 1400. But uh, you couldn't really tell that there was a point deficit between he and his peers. In fact, Jazzy for lengths of the game was topping the eco charts. He obviously won the South Navy. <laughs> we just saw an arse watch of that. Trying to move across from Mansika Uko. And Jazzy's got his ACU in the water. Not giving up is Jazzy. He still has control over the South Pond. He's still got all this going on at the top. He's holding off the Zooey spam. But surely... There is no way that he's going to be able to fend off the now... <laughs> uh, two Mavors and a Yolana. Sorry, correction. Three Mavors and a Yolana uh, for Team 2. Correction. Three Mavors, two Yolanas... And a fourth Mavor. It's like the fucking Christmas song on a partridge in a pear tree. And Jazzy goes down. And let's just bask in the glory <laughs> of this end base here by Mansika Uko and Stybjorn. Stybjorn curiously deciding to build an Atlantis in his pond. <laughs> Why the fuck would you do that? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he thought that Mansika would like tally into the pond and like spam T1 torpedo launches. Who knows? Who knows? A most excellent game there and I just cannot but I've never seen that at the end of the game. That is absolutely phenomenal all sprouting from this one Paragon here. So Mansika and Stybjorn bringing it home for Team 2. Gotta say some controversial happenings throughout that game. But nevertheless, go, let's go ahead and take a look at the stuff. So actually only two kills being recorded in this game. Uh, Mansika Uko taking Jazzy at the end and Hazenid being gifted to run to Rumbar's ACU uh, with that retarded, really. Uh, uh, well, yeah. Let's take a look at the stuff. And Mansika Uko with a clean sweep here of the categories mass income, power income, stuff built, and unsurprisingly, stuff killed. Is that like 3,000 kills? I think that's 3,000 kills, guys. Yeah. 3,000 kills! 
does anybody else even get okay so Hazen did with 2,000 kills so pretty clear pretty clear player of the match here uh, Masika Uko uh, steamrolled his top pond um, as he really should do as the rock player and uh, Stybjorn with a very very gritty defense of South Navy but inevitably losing that uh, with the assistance that Jazzy got from Bitchess. Jazzy also played really well in this match and uh, was perhaps unfortunate to be on the losing side but contributing to an excellent game right guys that's going to wrap this one up if you enjoyed this please don't forget to like subscribe leave comments uh, please don't forget about the feedback I, I asked for at the start of the cast and thanks very much guys take care i shall catch you in the next one